This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. Consumer demand for electronic devices is picking back up again around the globe, but Reuters reports it's causing a shortage of chips, which is leading to manufacturing delays. According to analysts, there's a number of causes including coronavirus lockdowns in Southeast Asia, a fire at a chip plant in Japan, a strike in France, and underinvestment in 8-inch chips. While it looks like it will affect production of laptops, smartphones, and other electronic devices the most, China's auto industry is warning that production will be disrupted in the first quarter of next year due to the shortage as well. Brexit is putting Nissan's plant in the UK in jeopardy. The company decided to ship its upcoming Aria electric vehicle from Japan to Europe instead of building it at its UK plant, even though it already makes the leaf there. The company says it's not viable to manufacture the Aria in the UK if Britain does not reach a trade deal with the European Union, since it would be slapped with a 10% import tariff. That would make it uncompetitive. Nissan's UK plant has the capacity to build half a million vehicles a year. But last year, it only made 350,000, and it could lose even more production without a trade deal. And speaking of the European car market, it's struggling right now. Sales in the region declined 12% in November, which follows a nearly 8% drop in October due to coronavirus lockdowns. Through November, sales have plummeted by 25% to 9 million vehicles. That's 3 million fewer vehicles compared to last year. The hottest automotive stocks yesterday were both in the tech sector. No surprise there. Texas-based Hylion, which makes electric powertrains for Class 7 and 8 semis, was up $1.04, or 6.6%, after Barclays gave it an outperform rating. And Blink Charging, the Miami-based startup which designs, manufactures, and owns EV charging stations, was up $3.36, or 11.9%. Investors are expecting the Biden administration to offer more incentives for electric cars, and the bulls are running rampant with anything to do with EVs. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. What's the weather tomorrow? High of 64. Find me the closest coffee shop. 20. Results found. And a date for tonight. Oh, good. Introducing dynamic voice recognition in the all-new Hyundai Elantra. He teamed up with Daryl Hall, and they went on to become rock stars with smash hits like She's Gone and Private Eyes and a whole bunch of others. John Oates is one of the best-known names in the music industry. He's also a hardcore car nut and our guest on Autoline After Hours today. So join us for what promises to be a great show that mixes cars and music. We've reported how plug-in hybrid vehicles can automatically switch to EV mode after entering a low or zero emission zone. Well, Ford has shown a more efficient way of doing this. It just finished a trial using PHEV vans with dynamic geofencing. Rather than have a fixed border around an emission zone, Ford used third-party air quality data to determine when was the right time to switch to electric mode and do it automatically. In areas that also had fixed geofence zones, the van switched to electric about half of the time. That jumped to over 70% with dynamic zones. It's possible the areas where these tests were done played a role in the difference, but we think it shows dynamic geofencing deserves more research and testing. Ford also showed how blockchain technology can go hand in hand with geofencing by securely recording when a vehicle entered and left an emission zone which could be shared with city authorities or fleet operators. 
Lordstown Motors is expanding beyond electric pickups. It's partnering with the RV company Camping World to build an electric motorhome. The two companies will first electrify trailers and fifth wheel campers to power electronic equipment on board. They're aiming to have them out on the road sometime next year. Later on, they will develop the electric motorhome, but there's no time frame for its release. And as part of the deal, Lordstown will use Camping World service centers for its endurance pickup instead of creating its own service network. EV Startup Canoe will have officially unveiled its multi-purpose delivery vehicle by the time you're watching this, and it looks way different than the prototypes. Those were almost pill-like in shape, but many people, including us, really like the styling. But if Tesla Cybertruck and a Bollinger had a baby that turned out to be a commercial delivery van, you would get the new Canoe. It might be disappointing to some, but we know exactly why Canoe took this route. It's the same reason the Cybertruck or Bollinger look the way they do. Cost. With flat panels, you don't have to shell out for expensive tooling and stamping presses. You may remember Sandy Monroe said Tesla could save hundreds of millions of dollars with this approach. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering. Boost your game. Borg Warner. Propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. And by Hyundai. Pratt & Miller is famous for fielding race cars for Corvette racing, but the company does a lot more than that. It has tremendous expertise in defense, mobility, and software development. So Oshkosh, the company known for specialty vehicles and military ones, just bought Pratt & Miller for $115 million. Don't worry, race fans. Oshkosh is committed to keeping that racing program going. As automakers migrate towards the software-defined car, they need new electronic architectures. They are also migrating towards centralized computing in a car, but they have to deal with legacy systems that use hundreds of discrete components with their own processors and software. So the supplier ZF developed what it calls a middleware solution. It's a layer of software that acts as a mediator between all those components and the vehicle's overall operating system. And it's modular, meaning different functions can be added or updated at any time with the middleware translating all the communication. ZF tells AutoLine that some automakers want the whole thing immediately. Some only want parts of it because they aren't ready to take it all on. ZF says the middleware will be on production cars in 2024. Porsche continues to make impressive progress with 3D printing. Earlier this year, it showed it could 3D print the pistons for the engine in the high-performance 911 GT2 RS. And now it's making the complete housing for its electric drive unit. Not only was Porsche able to make the housing more compact, the overall package is 10% lighter and twice as stiff in high-stress areas. Another advantage was integrating cooling passages into the unit and the two-speed gearbox as well. With a reduction in overall parts, Porsche was also able to cut the number of assembly steps, which reduced production time by 20 minutes. No word when Porsche might use this, but it says it was designed for use in the front axle of a sports car. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching.